and hopefully from here, we're gonna rejuvenate and recommission this badass GT40. What I've noticed with Ivan's fantastic work is he's made a crossover exhaust. This car initially as a Mark III GT40 would have not had a crossover exhaust. I want to assess the volume of the car. I really want to assess how I think the sound sounds. Um, you know, do we want it a bit louder? Do we want this car to, you know, let you know we've arrived even before we've got there? I mean, some, sometimes for me, that's really important. I'm gonna skip my brakes. I'm gonna make mistakes. I'm gonna skip my brakes. I'm gonna make mistakes. I'm gonna skip my breaks, I'm gonna make mistakes Look at beautiful stars, I wanna drive a faster car In the previous episode, you will have seen how things got a little heated, shall we say, when there was a car fire at 40 couples all. Not the proudest moment of my career, but these things happen. So now let's bring you up to date with the plans for my new baby. Hi guys and welcome to this episode of Make or Break. A couple of things you may have noticed, the car has changed location. We've taken this to my buddy Chris's farm and hopefully from here, we're gonna rejuvenate and recommission this badass GT40. So off the truck initially, you know, the other day we had a little look around it with um, Lee, our, our paint man, and he assessed the body work and you know, in our opinion, it is gonna need a bit of love, but it has got potential to be really, really good. Uh, we've got the car here now and under some lighting we can see some of the stuff we love and Ivan's done a fantastic job and we've also seen some of the stuff that will need to be improved. So what we're going to do okay, is we're going to go around the car and just have a proper inspection on things that we feel that could be recommissioned and stuff that needs to be replaced. It's not all about throwing all of Ivan's hard work in the bin here but there are some stuff that we want to change to make the car considerably worth more in the future. So it is about going around the car and really inspecting it properly. A couple of things initially Ivan noticed is that uh, we tried to start the car again you may have noticed in the previous video there was flames everywhere and it escalated quickly but we have noticed that the car is not running on all eight cylinders properly so it is going to need a bit of love to make sure that the car is running properly um, because safety is paramount here. It is about being safe when working on cars. And obviously as I'm on my own at the moment, it's really important that safety is paramount. If this car catches on fire, there's lots of other cars around me that could really, really be affected by me not concentrating. So um, remember guys, keep a fire extinguisher handy. Um, so what I'm gonna do guys, I'm gonna walk you around a couple of bits on the car straight away, just to tell you the things that really, really impressed me about the build. Um, a lot of the builds I've seen online have got T-clips up here to stop you opening the, uh, the rear clamshell, which is, it's a cheap way of doing what Ivan has done. Ivan has done, done uh, twin release clams here, but when you pull the handle, they open the rear clamshell perfectly. Let me just show you a little bit closer, show you what I mean. So these two clamshells here are fantastic. They're very well built. They're on a cable system which operates absolutely brilliant. So you pull one and it releases both of them in unison, which is fantastic. We're gonna be keeping that, we love that. Some of the body work that, and the, the chassis work that Ivan has done is also fantastic. These rear um, bars, side to side, front to rear, these are very, very important. They're rose jointed on both ends and they are very, very period correct. Couple of things, this bar here that goes over on a 45 degree angle should go straight up to, to ensure that that doesn't fold over if you were in an accident. Um, the exhaust also made out of stainless steel is fantastic. I'm not sure if the diameter of the pipe is correct, but that's something maybe we can improve on. We could maybe make it bigger. What I've noticed with Ivan's fantastic work is he's made a crossover exhaust. This car initially as a Mark III GT40 would have not had a crossover exhaust, but this is the part that makes it, doesn't, it, makes it sound like a supercar as opposed to a V8 Corvette or something like that with that rumble, you get more of a refined vroom as opposed to a bub, 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 like that kind of that kind of thing. And yes, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna uh, copyright my bub, 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 bub video because someone will use it as a meme. But a um, couple of things. So he's done the four to one collectors here, which are separate. You can actually remove the um, 
this part here by undoing this clamp and these four bolts here, which he has done a fantastic job because these are really, really nicely done. Once again, in stainless steel, making it so that it doesn't corrode all the years it's been sat in the garage. This heat shield is brilliant. It's done the job, but we will be making something a lot more pretty. Um, the cans as well, I want to assess the volume of the car. I really want to assess how I think the sound sounds. Um, you know, do we want it a bit louder? Do we want this car to, you know, let you know we've arrived even before we've got there? I mean, some, sometimes for me, that's really important. The exhaust tailpipes, we're going to change the position of them as well. We're going to make sure that they fit perfectly and look like a work of art. You know, people are going to want to see what's underneath here, but because of the level of workmanship that Ivan has already done, or we will do in the future, we want people to really want to look under the cover of the car and see what it's hiding. Are those exhaust tips as good as the rest of the workmanship of the engine bay? What we've also noticed is the car has a cast iron intake manifold. Um, these are standard on a 1968 302 Ford engine, but what we'd love to do is put a big aluminium one in there. The rocker covers are also a very nice touch, but we could also improve that with some gurney replica ones, which would be quite cool. The rear shock absorbers are coilover adjusted. By coilovers, you have a coil spring over adjustable shock absorber, which can be adjusted to allow the ride height to come up and down. So. You know, they are brilliant, but there are some options and some things we're going to need to change. The rear hubs on the car have been made by Ivan himself. And, you know, no disrespect to Ivan, he's done an absolute fantastic job. But I think there may be some kits out there that we can really, really improve on the look and the style and make this car something special. The drive shafts, we'll be able to send them off, get them rebooted and um, have them all powder coated. The gearbox itself is a five speed UN1, so I'd love to whip that out and throw a limited slip diff so we can do some donuts in it. He's done a lovely um, rose jointed gear selector at the back here. My only issue is it doesn't feel like it goes in nicely. I think it's going to be uh, crucial to make sure we can get into gear when we need to. So um, cleaning that up, making sure that we uh, grease it up and see if it moves nicely, then fantastic. If not, we may have to change that. The coolant reservoir, in my opinion, looks per period and correct. It looks very, very cool. May not look correct to the year of the car, um, but maybe we can play around with that. You've got an um, electric fuel pump under there. I think having both the fuel pumps to one side would make it nicer. A couple of things I've noticed, this rear firewall here is um, open, so it's not got any aluminium uh, on the back of that. I think I would like to wrap that in aluminium to make it look a lot prettier. Uh, these front to rear uh, rods here, a bit like a four link system, are rose jointed and are in very good condition. Ivan has hidden the uh, fuel sender units underneath that plate there, and he has made the fuel tanks himself, and they are in fantastic condition. They have been leak tested and they are foam fooled, which is filled, which is period correct. The seats to me look like they could be out of some sort of kit car, uh, like a, a mini Metro or something like that, or a kit car that would be period correct. In my opinion, they're very, very nice, but we need to really upgrade them and make them special. Um, a couple of things I've noticed on this car straight away is that the steering wheel itself is not center to the seat. And there is a real, real honest reason for that. So in the Mark I and Mark II uh, GT40s, this panel here would also house the gear lever because the gear lever would be in here. That for that reason, you'd have another three to four inches added on here just for the gear lever. So therefore you wouldn't have a center console. Okay, that would be completely gone. So what they've done is they've put a center console in, moved the seat over to make, make um, way for that. But the steering column is in the same place it would be on a Mark I and Mark II. So that is something we're gonna need to change. Um, and that includes moving the steering column to the right hand side. Um, but we are going to have to make some changes because obviously it's paramount that the steering wheel is central to the speedometer, which is there. Um, and that will all have to be moved and jigged. It may be better for us to find another dashboard and recommission all these parts over to it so we can get that space perfect. And I want to be proud of it. I, I want Ivan to look at this car and go, Wow, guys, you, you've really done a lovely job. Um, the steering column is out of a Triumph Dolomite, and it has been, um, it's been used to, to get it through the IVA, but for me, it's not as pretty as it could be. Um, look at the gap for my legs. I mean, that's absolutely crazy. What he has done is he did provide me with this steering wheel, which is basically the size of my hand, which is absolutely crazy because that was designed so that he could actually drive the car when he went to Monaco um, which fantastic I understand he got there but um, 
I'm a little bit longer in the leg, so it's important and imperative that we make the car safe. So we're gonna to have to move the steering column, we're gonna to have to rip the dash out, we're gonna to have to have a play with that. The seats, um, I think we're gonna to have to invest in some tornado seats unless anyone has some ideas or anything sat around. Um, I quite like the rear firewall, I think that's quite nice in aluminium, we can make that look a bit prettier. Screen is good, we can take the whole uh, roof spider off, okay? And by taking the roof spider off, we can send that off to the body shop and have, um, Lots of stuff improved. These little clasps here, we can have them done in stainless steel. We can have all the rubbers replaced. We can work a lot on the car and make it very special. Um, moving on to the front of the car. This car has Granada front suspension, which is very, very common in a lot of uh, home-built kit cars and what you'll notice is it's got lots of strengthening it's got lots of anti-roll bars and I can assure you this car would absolutely drive amazing and you know hats off to the gentleman that drove it all the way to Le Mans because you can really see that this car was a driver's car okay it was used to its potential and this suspension tells me that the car handled very well Granada's of their time this was the paramount this was the highest level of um you know, modern change in suspension of the day, and it would have been very good. So to have that in it, in it as a uh, brand new car in the 80s would have been amazing. A um, couple of things I love is the, the wiper motor, very, very period correct. Loving the twin horns, very cool. Um, and these pipes here are the coolant pipes that run underneath the car. And he's made them in this flat uh, stainless steel, which is fantastic. But what we've got to do is we've got to change the position of them. We want them to have them run through the middle of the car. The most important thing about a race car is having it aerodynamic and having two three by one inch um, stainless steel pipes going underneath the car aren't going to ensure any aerodynamicness for us. Um, the wheels are Halibrand wheels. We don't know if they're originals or not but they are in fantastic condition. They will need to be taken apart powder coated and put back together. Um, what he's used is Jaguar Sovereign or XJ6 um, fuel caps and they're fantastic, they do the job, they're lockable, they're brilliant, but we will wanna replace those with the period correct gas caps. They're very expensive, so if any of you lovely people out there have some, I would like to buy them. Um, looking in from the passenger side, a couple of details which I absolutely love. Okay, if you look at these gauges on the left-hand side, they have been fillered out um, with fiberglass possibly um, to actually contour towards the driver, which gives you that real fantastic look. And I love it. I'm so proud of the amount of effort Ivan has gone into. Um, the dashboard is peeling in a lot of places. He's done it in a, in a vinyl wrap. But what we might have to do is change that and make it a flocked dashboard. I do have some ideas about possibly making the center console and the dashboard out of carbon fiber to make it you know, a modern equivalent of the day. You know, Back in the day, they would have used fiberglass. But nowadays, we have new things and new items and new materials that are better and stronger doesn't always mean they are better fitted for the job. Um, so, you know, Ivan's done an amazing job. He really has. He's even incorporated a towing eye and a jack. Like all, all the stuff that when you drive your dream kit car to Le Mans, okay, you want it to be safe. You want to know that if you break down the side of the road and you need to put a, um, a spare wheel on the car, that the jack is there, the wheel brace is there. If you need to tone off that high speed road really quick with your lovely lady in the passenger seat, you need to know where it is exactly and be able to get it out fast. This car is amazing. Please don't take anything away from me. It truly is amazing, okay? Um, but I just really want to make it un believable okay i want all you uh, gt40 guys out there to look at this car one day you may be walking uh, across the car show and you go that is the hard up garage sam hard built gt40 and i want it to blow your mind it is good but it could be better guys check me out on the next episode on make or break we're going to get some fresh fuel in it we're going to put some new spark plugs in it and i reckon we can hear this beast roar to its potential with hopefully no flames engulfing my face. See you next week on another episode of Make or Break. Quick reminder, hit that subscribe button, the like button, and then the bell button. So you get alerts when we release new episodes and follow us on social media too for extra stuff and more alerts about videos we're releasing, which at the moment is every Sunday and the odd Wednesday too. Bye for now.